Hey everyone, welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, visual effects, and 3D animation. I'm your host, Sean Frangella, and this week we have a new tutorial on how to create this flat design 3D animation title sequence effect in Cinema 4D. So this is something that I've seen around quite a bit lately, and the most popular execution I saw was the end titles of Captain America Winter Soldier. And it's a really cool technique to mimic this idea of flat design, where everything looks like it's 2D and vector, but we get some perspective shift with the camera moving and objects changing. And you can see that it's actually 3D objects that we can create inside of Cinema 4D. So here's the final render, and if I jump into Cinema 4D, here is our project file. So we have just some basic 3D objects, and if I do an area render, we can see what it looks like with some flat textures and the background. If I just play ahead, we can see what's going on with it animating in 3D, and then as the perspective changes, we can see that it's actual 3D objects and 3D gears, but it has this nice flat design that's been really popular and cool lately. And if we look at another example, Here's just another quick type of animation in a similar way with the color swapped out. So we have a similar type of gear rotating in 3D with red on the front and white on the edges. And the usefulness of this technique is that you can very easily change colors and it's very light on rendering and create this cool little effect. So let's get started and build towards one of these. I'll make a new file in Cinema 4D and just swing my camera around and I'll start with a gear, which I can get by going to our vector tools and grab cogwheel. And the cogwheel in R16 has a lot of these new features, like being able to change the teeth, radius, as well as all types of different cogwheels and gears. It's some really fun stuff. And if you want to check out more on these gears, I have another tutorial on just some new R16 features. So be sure to check that one out after you're done with this one. So I'll, work on this a little I'll just tweak this gear a little bit just to get interesting i'm gonna make this circle bigger i can go to inlay and just bring this radius up so it's big enough to fit some text that's looking fine maybe just tweak these a little more so it looks a little more like my original gear and just get big enough hole for text and if you're not an r15 if i go to object legacy mode this is what you'd be seeing and that's fine you could do that with that one too this new one in r16 just has a few more features and what I want to do is extrude this. So I'll go to extrude under a subdivision surface and hold alt. And that's going to drop it in automatically. And we get a nice little 3d gear. And then I'm just going to take this extrude and make this movement bigger, maybe something like a hundred, just so we can see in 3d that there's some depth to it. And then I need some titles. So I could do those by going to MoGraph Mo text. And it's going to drop some text and you could also go to your vector objects and just get text and extrude it. There's a bunch of ways to make text and I'll just move this into the center and change this font. And there's tons of cool fonts you could use for this. Let's just grab a kind of a bold one that looks cool. Maybe just something like Franklin Gothic and have it on condensed. That'll look good on titles. Any sort of bold font is fine. And what I want to do is take the height of this down and I'll change the text to action hero or whatever action hero you want or your own name if you're feeling confident today and i'll change alignment to middle and just take this down just so it fits right inside of the middle of my gear now i want these to look like flat 2d titles and i don't want any depth to them so what i'm going to do is just take depth down to 0.5 and then they'll be pretty flat and that's what i want in this case and i can turn off my grid real quick by going to filter grid and then we're just going to duplicate this by holding command and I'll change this to the word starring and let's just get a quick italic font and just bring this down a bit. So that'll be our main text. Now the big thing in this technique with making it look good is all in the textures. And the way we can do this is double clicking down here to make a texture and I'll open this up and we're going to check off color and reflectance completely. And we're just going to check on luminance and you can see when we do that we just get a bright solid color so we can just use this as our texturing system to make a couple quick colors so i'll just call this red and that'll be my red texture and then i can just quickly make a few textures for my scene by duplicating this holding control or command and dragging i'll just call this one black and make black texture and grab another one and just call this white and make this white. And then we have a really basic three color palette to work with. 
Now I can start dragging this onto my objects or onto my in the viewport or onto my objects up in the object manager. And I'll just drag the white texture onto both Motex objects. And I should quickly rename those so I can keep track of this. And I'll just drop it on the second one by holding control and dragging down. And on this extrude, I want to have texture, but I want to have a different texture on the inside middle. If I just undo that, and if I turn on my lines with pressing NB, all I want is this inside. And that's not something as simple to texture as just caps. If I did something with selection tags like C1 or R1, just to texture little parts, I want to exactly texture just this middle part. And none of those are going to work. So to get that to go, what I need to do is separate this middle part with a selection tag and just texture only that. And the way I can do that is I'm going to take this extrude object and press C or this button here to make it editable. And that's going to change this from a gear object to just the geometry. And then I can go into plane mode and with the arrow tool, now I can just click, click and select more. And the quickest way to do this, cause it's just inside is if I press U L to get a loop selection, then it's just going to pick out loops. So I could do the inside and outside separately if I want. And that's going to let me texture things differently. So in this case, I only want the insides. What I'm going to do is just grab this inside with my loop selection tool on, and then I'll drag this black texture onto it in the viewport. And what that's going to do is drop the texture on and add this selection tag. And that's going to automatically apply that texture to that selection tag that's been created. And the little bonus part if I, is if I ever need to get back to that, if I just double click on that selection tag, it's going to light that up. And if I wanted to select the opposite, I could press UI to invert. And now I have all the opposite polygons from that loop selection. So now if I drag that white texture on to the whole thing and put it before everything, it's going to texture it white and then do that selection tag with black. And the last thing I need for this look is a background because if I do an area render with alt R and turn my quality up to get a quick preview, the background is just black and that's no good. So what we want to do is go to this tab and I'll create a background. And I'll just drag this red texture onto that. And now we get our cool little scene with some flat design textures. But if we animate stuff or move it around, we can see it's real 3D and has that nice look that's been really cool and popular. And when this is really going to shine is when we start to do some animation. So let's start doing that. What I'll do first is go to my render settings and just make this at 1920 by 1080. So it's HD resolution. And then I want to start animating my objects and having them move around and have some nice camera animation tracking in on this as things are rotating. So I'm going to grab this extrude, which I'll rename gear because that's my main object and I'll go to coordinates. And what I want to do is have it rotating around. And then when the camera gets close, just have it twist a little so that you can see that it's actual 3d and the text can separate above and below it. So I'll go to the beginning of my animation, click just this button to make a keyframe under this rotation. And I want to animate this one first. So I'll click to make a keyframe at zero on just this rotation value. Go ahead to the end and just turn this up a bit, click to make a keyframe, and then it's going to rotate around in time. Now it eases in automatically and that's not what I want. I want it to just start evenly, not slowly build up. So I'll just grab this keyframe and change my interpolation to linear. And then it's going to just go evenly and it can ease in at the end. That's fine. And then similarly, as it's getting towards the end of the animation, about two seconds at frame 60, I just want it to tilt down a little so we can really see that depth and have the word action hero sitting on this black background. So I'll make a keyframe of zero on this rotation value, go ahead in time and just twist it down. And then click to update that keyframe. And now I want to go back to object mode and just grab that starring Motex and make sure that's just aligned enough to be floating above this. And if I go back to the beginning, cool, it's all sitting within there and I can just make sure that things 
line up how I want them when it's in this final state. And if I do a quick Alt R area render and click off everything, now we can see that we really got this cool look and it's gonna really be alive when we get some animation going. So let's quickly create a camera and get some nice camera animation and talk about some tricks to animating cameras in really dynamic ways. So I'll create a new camera, jump into my camera view with this box, which is gonna pop us in and out of our camera view. And I'm gonna get my initial shot pretty far back. So I'm just gonna pull the camera back. And rather than animating the coordinates, which is one way I could do this, I'm gonna use some quick tags on this. So I'll go to my four views, look at where my camera is, and I'm gonna go up to my vector tools and draw a Bezier spline with this one. And this will be our camera track that we can just draw out rather than trying to animate the position and rotation of the camera. So I'll just click to make a point where the camera is now, and then I'll click pretty close to the gear to make a second point, and then I'll click and hold and just make a little dip at the end so the camera can go down a little. And now to get this camera to snap onto this, on the camera, all I wanna do is add a right-click Cinema 4D tag, align to spline, and that's gonna open up this tag where I can drop a spline onto this camera that it'll lock to, and I'll drop in this spline that I drew into spline path, and then it's gonna snap the camera onto that track, and all I need to animate is this position value, and then it'll move in. And the great thing I could do about this, if we go to our end, we can see we get a little too close, is all I need to do to change that is go to the spline, get into point mode, and then I can move those points and not lose any of the animation. And I want my camera to be looking up at this. I don't want it just pointed straight when it dips, especially towards the end. You see our framing is a little off. So what I can do is add another tag by doing Cinema 4D tag target, and that's gonna let me drop my target object into this. And I could just drop in the word starring or action hero, that one looks good. And the camera is always going to rotate itself to keep that part centered. So now I can go to that spline path tag and just animate the position. So let's say at the end, it's at, or pretty close to it, it's at 92. That looked about good with it pretty nicely locked up. And I'll make a keyframe and I'll go to the beginning and just pull this all the way back to zero and make a new keyframe. And then if I play, I get some nice camera animation and we get some, and we got something to fix because we're getting some weirdness with it kind of popping and not going evenly. So I might need to grab this keyframe and change this to linear. And let's see if that fixed it. No, we're still getting a little pop. So let's fix that. Maybe this one needs to be linear. And let's take a look at what's going on with our path. Camera's kind of stalling right there. So let's just take this one back to spline. And it's getting close, but it's calculating this last little part has way too much of this. So let's try and fix that. If I go into point mode, it looks like it's getting hung up right on this point. And this is a good thing to note with this align to spline tag. It's breaking it for some reason with this point and we probably don't need a third point that was probably extra so i could just grab my live selection tool grab that point and just delete that it's just getting a little confused and we probably don't need it we could just grab this n1 and do it that way and then it's not breaking this into three points and let's take a look now if i play all right we're getting our smooth camera motion and that's looking a lot better and let's just extend this a little so you can kind of see it hold for a bit and i'll go to my gear what I want. Now, just to have that gear kind of still going at the end, what I'll do is go to window timeline and that's gonna show all my animated tracks. And I'll go to the gear and this rotation. And this rotation B, I'm just gonna drag that and pull it over to 120. And then that's gonna keep rotating after the camera stops, just to get some nice secondary animation. And then if I back up and play, we get this nice camera move that comes in. We get our text lining up really nicely. And if I do a quick area render with Alt-R, we can see our nice lockup. And the great thing about this is that 
it's really easy to change or swap these out. So if I had this whole animation set up and I wanted to completely re re reverse the colors, I could just hold Command and drop a texture onto the existing tag and just swap these out. So maybe I want a red and white gear and one of the texts as red. Now we can really easily take advantage of this quick system. So this was a fun one to put together of how to do this flat design 3D titles like the one seen in Captain America Winter Soldier end titles. It's a really fun technique. You can do a lot with it. And along the way, we talked about some cool camera animation. And if you want to learn more about camera animation in Cinema 4D, you can check out some of the camera specific tutorials that I put together, as well as lots of the other Cinema 4D and motion graphics tutorials that I have up on YouTube by clicking the thumbnails that are up there. So be sure to click on those now. Or if you're still listening to this video and you forgot to click, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Sean Frangella if you have any questions, requests for tutorials, or want to talk on the social media. And be sure to like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital. And if you want access to these project files or other bonus content, you can head over to patreon.com slash Sean Frangella where you get all sorts of bonus content and help keep the show going because I like making these tutorials and you guys like seeing them. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button that repeats constantly in these tutorials to get weekly motion graphics and 3D animation videos sent straight to you. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.